Okay, we're back. Video number two, built up wood beams. Uh, these are a very popular beam in a house. They're nice to work with. Um, the material's readily available and it's one of your lowest cost beams to put in. Steel beams aren't that bad either. Um, and we're gonna look at built up wood beams and how we can use them in the house. All right, uh, again, what I'd like to do is first look at the code book and this is on page 149 in your code book. We're gonna focus in on the screen here and go through the points and see if we can not explain this. Built up wood beams. And it's important, if you look right there, it says C Appendix A. We're gonna take a trip over to Appendix A, uh, which is in volume two of your code book. Anytime you come into your uh, code book and you see in brackets there, C Appendix A, it, it's basically saying, we're trying to give you the information in the sentences below, but maybe a picture or if we expand on this information would help you a lot so you don't get in trouble later on. So sentence number one, where a beam is made up of individual pieces of lumber that are nailed together, the even individual members shall be an inch and a half or greater in thickness and installed on edge. So let's come back to our built up wood beam on the desk here. Here we have a built up wood beam or something that could be a built up wood beam. Each piece of material is an inch and a half thick and when I put it on, it's going to be put on its edge. One, not a beam. Two, still not a beam. Three pieces, we've got ourselves a beam, all right? Three individual pieces, each of them an inch and a half thick and installed on the edge. Four ply and five ply, all right? Now we'll go back up to the screen, look at part sentence two. Classic Ontario building code book, except as permitted in sentence three, where individual members of a built up beam are butted together to form a joint, the joint shall occur over a support. Come back over here again. If you go to your local lumber yard, you can pick up spruce uh, lumber, spruce pine fir lumber, and you can get it easily 16 feet long. And in the Stony Creek Turk Street yard, you can even get it up to, I believe, 22 feet long on the yard. Anything after that is a special order. So if we're going to build up a wood beam using 16 foot lumber, we may have to put a joint in it. And what they're saying that if we have a joint in the beam, the joint in the beam better happen over top of a support. So if we have a support here in the middle, if we're going to butt the joints together, if we're going to create this, this joint, it has to happen over top of a support. And that's the simplest way to put a wood beam together. However, it's not always the easiest way to put a beam together. When you're putting layers of a beam up, it can get a bit tippy, all right, and you basically, you're trying to figure out a way while you're building the beam to stabilize this joint. Now one of the easiest ways to stabilize this joint is to actually take one of the members and not have it join over the intermediate support. And this is going to take the two pieces, I'm gonna lay these down so we can actually see this. If I have one member that's sticking out past the other, I can now create a solid joint here. And then when I carry on my beam, I have now a joint that potentially is over top of the support and I have a joint that's not. So here this joint's over the support, this joint isn't over the support. The same thing's going to happen at this end when I come in to fill in my beam. So let's go back up to the code book and see what sentence three has to say. Sentence three, where a beam is continuous over more than one span. So I have a beam, I've got bearing at the left end, I've got three and a half inches of bearing at the right end, and it's gonna go over maybe two or three columns. Where a beam is continuous over more than one span, individual members of the beam are permitted to be butted together to form a joint at or within six inches of the end quarter points of the clear spans. Provided the quarter points 
are not those closest to the ends of the beam. Is your head spinning? We'll read that sentence again. Where a wood beam is continuous over more than one span, so more than one column in between, individual members, of, individual members are permitted to be butted together to form a joint within six inches of the end quarter points of the clear spans provided the quarter points are those not closest to the ends. This is why they say C Appendix A. It's pretty much just for sentence three. The rest of this stuff is, is pretty, pretty easy to see, pretty uh, layman's. Let's go over to Appendix A in Volume 2. And this is going to happen on page A120. So Appendix A, page 120. I'm going to slip this in. We'll stay focused on the, uh, we'll stay focused in on that. Try not to have a seizure. All right. Hopefully, we can explain this a bit better. Looking at this particular picture here, here is my support, here is the support. I can take this first ply of the beam, I can run it past my support. Within a quarter span, the distance from the center of this support, the distance to the center of that support, if I broke this up into four even components, I would have a quarter span, a quarter span, a quarter span, and a quarter span. Within the first quarter span of the beam, meaning within the first quarter between center to center, and within six inches of it, I can put a joint in my beam. I can do the same thing right here or right here. However, the sentence also says that I can't do it in the last quarter span of the beam meaning that where this is going to lay on the foundation wall or a post, if it's the principal support at the end of the beam, I can't have any joints. I can only start having joints in my beam once I cross over this column here. Does that make sense to everyone? So the picture helps a lot. This is on page A120 in uh, your volume two appendix A. No joints were permitted to be at the end of the beams in this location not more than one joint per uh, piece in each span. Joints are not more than half the members of, uh, at these locations. And here we have our column and here we have the bearing plate above the column. Okay, so let's come back over and let's finish up the sentences uh, here on part nine. Okay, so it was sentence three that gave us the big run around here. Let's have a look down and see what sentence four has to say. Okay, sentence four. Members joined at quarter, pound, quarter points shall be continuous over adjacent supports. So if you put a, a, a joint over your first column, that particular member, that, that layer of the beam has to continue on through the next support. It can't have two joints between two supports. Joints and in individual members of a beam that are located at or near end quarter points shall not occur in adjacent members at the same quarter point and shall not reduce the effective uh, beam width by more than half. So if you want to come over a column If our beam starts here and comes over, if we want to put a joint in this first layer here, then this member can't have another joint in it until it's over past this column. If we want to put a couple of joints in this area, if we were to draw it out, and this had several layers in it, we can't reduce the width of the beam by more than its half. So this particular one has one, two, three, four layers in it. I can't put another joint right here and reduce it by half. I have to stagger this. I have to put the joint here. And then maybe I've got a joint here. 
So I have to stagger my joints in my beam. They can't be within uh, six inches of end quarter points, all right? And when we come back, we're gonna start talking about steel beams. Read through your code book, page 149, all of the sentences. Sentence one, all the way down to sentence seven for built up wood beams.